why does this feel so weird it hasn't even been that long <laughs> i have been so excited to tell you this story for the past nearly four weeks and <laughs> now it's come to it i'm so worried that i'm gonna forget little details and i don't know it just feels so weird but <laughs> i also have been so excited anyway hello guys i am back with my birth story i haven't filmed for weeks and this feels strange i am now a mum <laughs> also feel strange i promise i'll probably calm down and settle into camera life again i also just really wanted to say thank you so much for all your lovely lovely messages on instagram on tiktok since our little baby girl winnie i haven't actually said it on youtube but her name is winnie valerie kirkland so we just love the name Winnie. We just said it to each other and it was the only name Niall actually liked. <laughs> he had nothing to kind of give instead of, but he just didn't like any of the other names. So luckily he really liked Winnie and it was my favourite. So yeah, there's not like a massive backstory, although weirdly we found out afterwards when I told my dad the name um, that my dad's dad's mum was called Winifred. So I just thought that was really cool, but... Yeah, her name is Winnie, not Winifred, and her middle name is Valerie after my grandma. Her name was Valerie, and Kirkland, obviously, is our second name. So, yeah, that is her name. She came into the world one day early, so she just missed her due date. I had this weird feeling that she might be very slightly early. I don't know why, and I feel like I kind of wanted to get it out of my head, but my friends and my mum and my dad all kind of had this weird feeling as well. I'm, you never know. Her birthday is the 12th of July. She's been here for nearly four weeks now, and she is the best little human ever, and I just... I'm so obsessed with her, so is Niall, and so is my mum, and so is all our family, and I just feel so blessed to have her, and to feel how I felt from my birth and since. I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs, which I'm sure we will tell you all about. I might tell you in this video, or I might just focus on the birth. We'll see how long it takes me to tell you about the birth, because I'm a massive blabber, and it's been a while. <laughs> but... Yeah, there's a, a lot has happened and there's been a lot of ups and downs, but in general, it has just been the most incredible experience. I was really quite nervous, to be honest, about moving into motherhood and I spent a lot of my pregnancy kind of preparing for the good and the bad and you, you hear a lot about the bad, especially online and the sort of more negative parts of parenthood and motherhood. So I think... Yeah, I was very nervous how I was kind of going to take to it. I was really hopeful that, you know, it I'd take to it. But, yeah, it's just been amazing. And I can't wait to kind of get back vlogging again soon and kind of bring you on this new little chapter in our lives with our little baby girl, Winnie. She's just cute. I will bring her into this video as well. I'll get Niall to come up. I was thinking about talking through this birth story with Niall because he was absolutely amazing as my birth partner not to gloat about my husband but he was so incredible he properly was in it with me and i did talk a, a bit about this while i was pregnant but i did a lot of studying of hypnobirthing and the birth partner is quite kind of important that they very involved and sort of study it too and he did and i honestly could not have done it without him um i know some people in labor just want to do it themselves but I was so glad that he was <laughs> so good and he literally guys my labor was 31 hours he literally massaged my lower back not for 31 but something like 26 hours he was massaging my back through every contraction he was just like the best person ever I feel like I love him so much more <laughs> since that because he was just incredible i'm so grateful it was a very positive experience and i know not everybody experiences that and i was so fortunate that i did have a positive experience but afterwards i was like i don't know how i would ever do this again because <laughs> we would love to have another baby hopefully one day if we're lucky but i was like i don't know how i'd do that again <laughs> but now Everybody kind of said to me who'd had a baby when I said that, they were like, you forget the pain and you actually 
kind of do and that, that, that this is why I kind of wish I'd filmed this slightly closer to the birth but I really wanted to settle into life with her and just yeah I was a slug on the sofa <laughs> and I just wanted to make sure I was ready to sit down and talk but then I do kind of wish that we were really close to the moment because I'm slightly worried I'm gonna forget some of the feelings and I, I kind of wish I still remembered like that pain <laughs> I can tell you because it was so so painful so painful but so worth it I've got my notes so I wrote out my birth story as well very close to when I gave birth so that I didn't forget anything and so I've kind of got it written forever so started on Saturday the 8th so I gave birth on Wednesday the 12th of July and this kind of started on Saturday the 8th only like a very few little symptoms but I just thought I'd tell you them because I found it really interesting kind of just it's so weird like I was just so curious as to if I was gonna know when labor started what a contraction felt like I did know when it <laughs> when it began but also I did have some like earlier symptoms a few days before I went into labor so Saturday the 8th I lost my mucus plug so when this happened I was like is that a mucus plug <laughs> I don't know if that's a mucus plug and I explained it to my best friend and she was like, I think that's your mu mucus plug. But then there's the mucus plug, which can sometimes be lost like a few weeks before labor. So it doesn't really actually mean that much, but it was kind of the very first signs for me that labor was close. So I lost my mucus plug, which, sorry, this is gonna be a TMI video and it is actually gonna be probably a very TMI video, but it's a birth story, so <laughs> I apologize in advance. But, Essentially, it was like a gloopy discharge that <laughs> I was having a wee and I got up and it was rolling down my leg. And I was like, okay, that is not normal discharge. There's something funny about this. And I like looked at what does mucus plug look like. Don't do that because it's a lip. Well, you can, but it's not very pretty. <laughs> and then there's a thing called bloody show, which is kind of like your mucus plug, but it's, m I mean, I might get some of these facts a little bit wrong, to be fair, but this is just what I know and what I've been sort of told. And bloody show, I think, is when you have a rupture of the membranes, which means you're probably closer to labor. And I didn't have blood in it. I lost my mucus plug. I had period-like cramps on and off from the Saturday. So the Saturday and the Sunday, I just had like, you know, that kind of dull ache in your lower tummy. And then the Monday night slash Tuesday morning, but very early, so it was like I'd gone to sleep on the Monday. This is really weird as well. Me and Niall guessed that this would be the time that I would go into labour. I mean, I feel like I, I did say it actually on my vlog. I did on my last vlog that I think it's going to happen on the Monday. I mean, I didn't give birth on the Monday, but labour started, kind of, because it was kind of the night. So it was technically Tuesday morning. Anyway, so I woke up on Tuesday at 3 a.m. and I was in pain and it wasn't just period cramp pain so weird it's so hard to explain a contraction pain as well but they kind of come in waves so they sort of start feeling really painful and then they peak at the top being super super painful so it goes up and then it sort of slows down and obviously at this point for me anyway they were very doable like I, I didn't feel like they were unbearable and I was like, right, I'm gonna try and go back to sleep. I feel like that is a contraction. I just wanted to try and get as much rest as I could if it was the start of labor, cause that's what I've heard. And then another one came about an hour later and it was more painful. I was like, I really wanna sleep. So I tried to go back to sleep. And then another one came about half an hour later and I was like, right, I'm gonna keep waking Niall up at this rate because it was really painful. I was trying to do my hypnobirthing, breathing through them, which is in for four, out for eight. So I went downstairs, Biscuit came with me, bless him. <laughs> I really remember this moment vividly, it was so cute. And I had my pregnancy pillow with me, which was a godsend. And I lay with it and I put Moana on. <laughs> And um, they were coming very irregularly and they weren't too bad at this point, but I was like, okay, these, these are contractions, I think. They are coming in waves and I need to breathe through them and I kind of needed to close my eyes and focus through them, which I hadn't really ever experienced before. And the weird thing was through my whole labor, and I don't know if she was back to back, which is when the baby is the, essentially facing the wrong way. Apparently if they're back to back, you have most of your labor pain in your back and I did. 
all of my labor pain and all of my contractions were in my lower back and it was savage. <laughs> I ran myself a bath and I read that it was okay to do that because I was also kind of Googling online like, can you have a bath when you're in labor? And I think it can, well it did actually slow down my contractions and at that point I was like, I don't mind right now because this pain has ramped up and it's, it was all in my low back and I just was hoping it would ease it a bit. It did slightly ease the pain I think because you're kind of weightless in there. I remember I wanted to try and go for a walk so we walked the dogs, we went to our local bakery which we do every morning and we it was funny because I was having contractions in the bakery and I remember the next day my mum went into the bakery and they were like did she have the baby because we're really good friends with the people at the bakery and my mum was like yeah <laughs> went for a walk and I wasn't kind of timing my contractions really I was just keeping an eye on them because they were still quite sporadic I know that you need to have three every 10 minutes for about almost a minute per contraction to be in established labour so I was just in early labour at this point and I wanted to do as much of the labour at home as I could because I do find hospitals a little bit daunting. I haven't spent a lot of time in them in my life except when my mum was really ill and I went to a lot of her cancer appointments with her and I just have this weird feeling towards hospitals from that and um, although I was always planning to have Winnie in hospital. The longer I could be at home, the better. And also they do just often turn you away if you're not far enough into labor. They were just kind of sporadic all day. Sometimes they'd be every 10 minutes, then it would be an hour, then it'd be half an hour. So these were all signs that I was just not that close. And I was just going with it and I was just like, look, maybe she'll come today, maybe she'll come tomorrow, maybe she'll be a few days, because some people are in labor for longer than 31 one hours. I spent most of the day just kind of bouncing on my ball and I was very tired so I was sitting on the sofa a lot and I was just watching Disney. <laughs> Carl was over as well, it was really funny and he was like, what the hell, how am I here when you're in labour? <laughs> I wanted to go for another walk in the evening and that did slightly ramp them up so at that point I think they were every 15 minutes. I actually wrote down my contraction times from this point on my phone because <laughs> Look at all these. these are all my contraction times. <laughs> Three missed. Um, yeah, because I wanted to see what was going on. So yeah, they were about every 10 to 15 minutes at this point. So they were ramping up and walking apparently is supposed to kind of help. By this point as well, I found that I couldn't go through any contraction without standing up. So I think because all the pain was in my lower back, I was exhausted because I'd been up most of the well, half of the night before and was just all day going through these contractions on and off. Mentally, it's a big sort of mental game to kind of keep pushing through it and keeping your spirits as high as you can. And also it's really important to keep up the oxytocin hormone in your body, which is like the feel good hormone. So I didn't want to kind of stress and um, that can also slow down the labor then. So the oxytocin is what kind of encourages your body to like develop with labor. So I was really conscious of that. So that's why I was just putting on like Disney and just trying to stay calm. <laughs> I couldn't do a contraction not standing up and I was like leaning over something through every contraction. It was the only way that it didn't feel diabolical. <laughs> and Niall was doing the lower back massage through everyone. We had this cooling gel which I feel like will haunt me forever whenever I look at it now because do you know what was so funny? He mas massaged my lower back for so many hours and constantly that he first of all exfoliated away all my fake tan <laughs> so I could feel like all of it coming away and just like bits of skin and then he was exfoliating away my skin constantly so that part of my back was just like a baby's bum <laughs> by the end of it. I remember we were watching Love Island and then it got to about 10 o'clock and they were every sort of seven minutes my contraction so I was like okay this is ramping up. I feel like this could happen in the night. I always was going to have my mum here when I went into labour so that she could come once I'd given birth and come and meet Winnie and then look after the pets because we weren't sure how long we might be in. Although things kind of changed a little bit near the end which I'll tell you about but anyway I called her. She drove up at about midnight and got here at about two in the morning and we were still up at this point 
just like going through the contractions every sort of five minutes by this point but it still wasn't three in ten in the ten minute block i remember as well actually me and now went outside and sat in the garden and it was like midnight after i called my mum and i just had like a little emotional moment because i was like this is it and although i was so excited to actually give birth because of the book i read the hypnobirthing book I'd been so excited for weeks to experience it, although I, you just don't know how it's gonna go. So there was this excitement, but also a lot of nerves that like, how is this gonna pan out? And the other thing I remember saying to Niall, I was like, this is the last time that it's just gonna be me and you in this house. And although like, obviously I was so excited to have Winnie join the family, it still was something that I wanted to feel and vocalise to, I don't know, I just think it's really important to kind of be honest with yourself and I wanted to be honest with Niall and I was like, this is, I feel like, they say mourning your old life, I didn't quite feel that but I, in a way, I kind of did because I was like, this is, this is it, like this, it's going to be different forever. And I felt really emotional because I was obviously tired and in labour as well. But, yeah, it was just the reality at that point that I was like, right, this is ha this is really happening and this is scary. Exciting, scary, nerve-wracking. Never gonna be just me and you sat here. We're always gonna be, you know, with our baby now. But anyway, then we spent most of that, well, that night was tiring really tiring and it just felt like nothing was progressing for most of the time from about midnight till about 3 a.m my contractions were still only every five minutes and the pain really ramped up but also I, I was so tired by this point and i think that was the main thing that i found hard through the pain and keeping my spirits high was just like it was it was a it was a mission <laughs> It was like a marathon. <laughs> so that night, my mum and Niall took it in turns to kind of help me with the pain in my back, massaging my back. So we wanted Niall to get a bit of a rest so that he could have some energy then whenever we did get into hospital. And um, and then they'd kind of swap and do <laughs> little shifts. It was really cute. I had another bath at like three in the morning. I watched Simpsons again. <laughs> it didn't really slow down my contractions that time though, but it did help with the pain a little bit. I remember lying on our hallway in the dog basket because after I got out of the bath, actually after I got out of the bath it was really weird. It just felt like my weight couldn't, I don't know when I, because obviously I was weightless in the bath and then when I got out I didn't, I couldn't carry my weight and I was just in a lot of pain. So I, I just crawled out of the bathroom to our hallway and into Bluebell's basket. <laughs> and I was like I'm just gonna lie here, it's too painful. Put on uh, folklore, Taylor Swift's album, and just was breathing through. Blue Bar and Basil were so confused at this point too, they were like, what is going on in this house? <laughs> I also was using a TENS machine at this point too. We tried it in the last vlog, and I was like, how does anyone use these? Because it felt like someone was peeling sellotape off like your baby hairs, you know, like that horrible tingly feeling but it actually worked because it was distracting me slightly from the pain of the contractions which is obviously the point in it then i think it, it was about must have been about half four in the morning and my contraction did suddenly start to ramp up so they were every four minutes and then every three minutes and when they got to every three minutes i was sort of we were all in the kitchen at this point awake and i was bouncing on my well actually no i wasn't bouncing on, on my ball but i was kind of doing this on my ball being like <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> and then any time a contraction came, I would lean over the kitchen and um, kind of try and breathe through it like that because that felt the most comfortable for me. And I was drinking a lot of Earl Grey tea. Weirdly, since I've given birth, I'm obsessed with Earl Grey tea, which is such a granny tea, but I just love it. <laughs> I think it will always remind me of pregnant, well, labour and newborn life. And then Niall rang labour line again, and at that point I actually couldn't speak through the contractions they were really painful so he was talking to them and they were like right yeah you're ready to come in we'll try and request a birthing pool but we'll have to see when you get there if there's one available so we packed everything up and then we got in the car my mum got in her car because she was like shall i come and just like see you off 
and I was like yeah because she'd been so helpful and it was so nice to have my mum there actually because obviously you know me and my mum are really close and she was such a comfort so we got to the hospital I remember sitting in the car park and crying again and I was like how's this gonna pan out I just it was a really weird feeling because I was like so hoping that it would pan out okay and I knew that I was gonna give birth soon and I was like how is it gonna feel and even though I felt prepared from mentally from my hypnobirthing that I'd been learning about when the moment actually came I was like wow this is scary and I can't believe I'm at this point in my life where this is really really happening <laughs> so there's so many different emotions going through me I was excited I was glad that I was at you know I'd progressed through the labor and you know I was hoping that it wasn't going to be too much longer through the pain and I was so excited to meet Winnie trying to keep my spirits as high as I could not lose all the oxytocin and written out all my birth preferences not a birth plan I'd always kind of gone in feeling like I don't want to fixate on a plan because I do feel like if it goes wrong and you are really fixated or you really can't do something that you really visualize that you're gonna do in your birth I think personally I find it would make me quite wobbly and it could sort of destroy my spirits a little bit so I had preferences I'd written out like that I wanted delayed cord clamping I really hoped for a water birth but if not I really wanted you know hopefully to have minimal people around just a couple of midwives and Nile and I, I was hoping to put out some fairy lights and make the room nice and sort of vibey that's another big hypnobirthing thing is kind of having something for each sense so that you feel comfortable because I didn't want the room that I gave birth in to feel too surgical and even if I was to have a c-section you kind of have preferences say if I do need to go and have a c-section please can you oh what was it called they you can sort of ask sometimes I mean I'm sure this isn't the case always if it's an, a big emergency but you can ask them to slow like bring the baby out slower so it's a little bit more like less of a shock for the baby and that I wanted skin to skin hopefully if I could if not Nile to etc etc but I just had like prefer little preferences for each option or path that could happen so that I felt like I was kind of in the know and that's a big thing that you learn about in hypnobirthing is advocating for yourself and not feeling completely out of control yeah so I was just hoping that I'd be able to make the room feel a little bit less surgical dim the lights have our birth playlist on which we did <laughs> I did a lot of the birth through Harry Styles and Mamma Mia the other weird thing that I was feeling at this point that made me really emotional was that I really wanted Bluebell <laughs> Bluebell is like my comfort blanket she is Bluebell is my dog if you don't know well one of my dogs and she is particularly close to me Basil's a little bit closer to Niall I mean obviously I love them both but Bluebell is so just everything in a dog and she, I just get really emotional leaving her sometimes and I really wanted her but obviously I couldn't but I felt a little bit sad about that too and I <laughs> It's not like just I hope Bluebell's okay at home. Anyway, so we went into the hospital. I remember my contractions slightly slowed down at this point too because often if your environment changes and obviously I was feeling a little bit nervous and we were walking through the maternity ward and it was it was like 5 a.m. so it was very dark and there wasn't really anyone around and it was a bit it felt a little bit daunting and sort of creepy because it was just a very very quiet dark hospital ward and although the maternity ward that we were at turned out to be amazing and I wish that I could be friends with my midwife who brought Winnie into the world because she was so lovely but at that point it just felt really scary so anyway we were put in a room at that point there actually wasn't any birthing pools available I was a little bit sad about that but I was just hopeful because they did say you know depending on how long it takes you to give birth. One may become available and I think someone was in one of the rooms but they weren't using the pool so they were hopeful that we might get in that one. Then I had my observation so I was really nervous to see how dilated I was because I was just hoping I wasn't like one centimeter and I'd done 26 hours of this early labor and I just hadn't got anywhere because that does happen and you just never know. So they observed me and I was five centimetres dilated and I was like, thank 
God, <laughs> we are getting somewhere here. Because she needed to get to 10 centimeters dilated. So I was still technically only halfway, but apparently the second part can be a lot quicker, and it was. But still, there's a bit, like there was a little bit of a moment where I was like, am I literally halfway through? I've done 26 hours. Is there gonna be another 26 hours until we're 10 centimeters? But it doesn't really work like that. Then we sort of set up the room, Niall put out the fairy lights, and we kind of were sort of settling to the fact that we were gonna stay in that room and so I wanted to make it feel nice. So we put on our little birth playlist on a little speaker, fairy lights went out, I got into some comfies, I put on, actually I did plan on putting on pyjamas but I was in so much pain that I just couldn't kind of get into them quick enough but I managed to quickly put on some like these really comfy skims boxes and my dressing gown. We got the snacks out and I got out the dried mango which really helped me through. <laughs> this part is slightly blurred for me. This is where it got real. <laughs> I remember I felt like a lot of liquid coming out of me which was my bloody show so it just completely leaked all through everything all over my dressing gown. Sorry TMI again but it's kind of like it's not blood but it was sort of a bloody discharge but a lot of it so then the midwives gave me a maternity pad and I was like whoa I didn't know that happens and how much leaks out of you <laughs> um and then they brought in the gas and air now i wanted to hopefully hopefully do just gas and air with my birth because you can't use the birthing pool and have an epidural and i wanted to try although i was quite nervous to try the gas and air because i've heard a lot of people say that it makes them feel sick or they just hate it and um i don't i don't particularly like feeling completely out of it and i know that that can happen from the gas and air I tried it i did like two breaths in and out and i was like no i'm too scared it's freaking me out and then i just sort of put it down and, and just try and keep breathing through the contraction so i still do my four and eight so in four out for eight and i think there was about four or five of them and then a contraction would be over and that's kind of what helped me mentally through the contractions because i knew that you know once i done the fourth or fifth one the contraction will probably be over they just suddenly ramped up and within about half an hour it really felt like there wasn't a single gap between each contraction so i remember i went to go for a wee i ran to the toilet and within 30 seconds sat on the toilet seat tried to wee and a contraction came and i just fell on the floor in pain and i was crawling on the floor like niall please come and rub my back i can't do it and the midwife came in like are you okay <laughs> like honestly in that moment i remember thinking all dignity is going out the window from here and i'm just gonna have to surrender to that and although i'm not really precious about that sort of thing massively you do have to properly surrender to you just have no dignity then the midwives changed shift i think must have been like half eight in the morning on the Wednesday at this point and these were the midwives that were with me when I gave birth and they were just absolutely incredible and yeah I just feel like they got me through as well as Niall but just having the most lovely gorgeous midwives helped so much and I Particularly one of them, there was something about her which I was like, I just felt such a warmth. And I remember holding her hand at a point and I was like, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> when the midwives changed, they tried to encourage me at this point to try and the gas and air again because I was in so much pain at this point. There was almost no break between contractions. It just felt like so exhausting. I was just so tired. I remember really vividly just keeping going and I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> And it honestly just like it doesn't really take the pain away I found but it just took me to like a different place and it made me feel like a little bit out of my body and kind of like dizzy and a little bit out of it so I wasn't kind of as conscious I guess then the midwife said to me she was like a birthing pool has become available so we're gonna get it all ready and get in there and I was so pleased at that point because I was like, oh my God, I didn't think that it was gonna happen. And it, that really lifted my spirits actually, I think. And I was like, oh my God, we're going into the water. <laughs> and I was hoping because the baths had helped so much that it would actually help a lot with the pain, but 
I don't know why I always hoped for a water birth. I think probably because my best friend said it was so great. I love a bath, so it was just like a massive bath. I actually have footage, which I will have slotted in as we've been talking, because um, I didn't actually vlog the day, but Niall got a few little random clips, and he did put on my camera for when Winnie came out, and I think I'll put that in because I was so thankful to him because we. I took my camera thinking, well, I would like to capture that moment at the end, but there was no way I was going to do a birth vlog. I needed to focus. I know some people can do it and I have so much respect for them and I feel like they're so nice to watch. There's no way on earth I was going to talk to you through that experience because I couldn't talk to anyone. <laughs> so there's no way I was going to be like, hi guys, just a quick update. We went into the birthing suite. The midwives had set up all of our fairy lights and our music and that room was so lovely and I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm probably going to give birth in here and I'm pro hopefully actually going to get my water birth. And I think again that lifted my spirits when walking into that room and it felt so nice in there and honestly, if there's one thing I would try to suggest if you can when you give birth is your environment. If like me particularly you don't like hospitals and you find them quite sort of clinical and yeah it just made such a difference and even if you have a c-section you apparently you can ask for dimmed lights, you can ask for your music and it might sound silly but it really did help and I just I'm so grateful for the book I read I will go and grab it before I finish this video just to quickly show you the one that I read because it was incredible and I felt like I knew what I was kind of doing in a way although you never know how things are gonna go I just felt like I was in the know about different circumstances that may happen and so there was nothing because there was a couple of scary moments at the end which I think if I didn't know that that could happen it would have been more scary do you know what I mean as they were running the bath I also thought I'd heard that you needed to have it boiling hot so that was the other reason why I didn't know if I'd actually have a water birth in the end because a couple of people I've spoken to recently said that you have to have it at a certain temperature and I don't actually like boiling baths. I like hot baths, boiling not so much. So when she said to me, how do you like your bath? I was like, no way, can I literally have it any temperature I want? And she was like, yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Pain eased so much and I just was like, this is great. I still had the gas in air and at that point obviously now couldn't massage my back anymore which he was probably really grateful for because <laughs> his hands must have ached so much but he was he he was honestly just the best thing ever the best man ever i don't want to make this sound like it was all f a fairy tale and rainbows because it was really hard but just having his support and him not getting afraid or I think he was, but he didn't show me it because he wanted to be the strong one for me, which we'd read so much on from this hypnobirthing book. But, I mean, I did hypnobirthing to an extent because I think if you're really going in on the hypnobirthing, you get into a, such a deep, relaxed state, you don't even feel like, like you kind of are just breathing in this deep relaxation sort of meditation. I didn't get there. <laughs> but the breathing did help. Heavily lent on Niall to support me mentally through it. So he was kind of face to face with me, just talking me through being like, you can do this. We're so close to meeting her and we're, we're nearly there, you can do this. I also didn't know this, but they, they could only observe me and how dilated I was every four hours. So at half nine, she said to me, right, we're gonna see how dilated you are. Because at this point, I really wanted to know how much I'd progressed since that 5 a.m. observation where I was five centimeters. I got out of the pool and they observed me and they were like, you're 9.5 centimeters dilated. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank God. <laughs> that basically meant that we were really, really close. So I got back in the pool and I do remember at this point, I think my waters broke. Cause that was the weird thing. My waters didn't break. And you kind of always see in films, like that's the thing that starts labor, but it's not true. Some people, that is what happens. And it's all dramatic. Like, oh, my waters are broke. <laughs> but that didn't happen to me at all. But I heard this sudden pop in the pool and I was like, 
what was that? <laughs> really weird part of this now was when it's called the transition phase where your body changes from contractions to involuntary pushing which is when my body was then ready to give birth and start pushing so i remember this transition phase can really make women wobble and really sort of panic and feel weird and so i thought i was prepared for that i was not and i remember it happening and being like i feel completely out of control of my body it, it was so weird i remember suddenly the contraction pain slowed down but my body just felt like i needed to go for a poo and it was still painful but in a different way and i was like what's my body doing and i remember looking at the midwives like i feel like i need to go to the toilet so many times and they were like no no you don't because it had only just been that they'd observed me and i was 9.5 so i think they thought that there was still a little bit more time that until I was going to be 10 centimetres and they kept sort of looking with a mirror to see if they could see anything and they couldn't and I was like no 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 I, th I think there's something weird going on in my body right now and I I remember it was so painful that I couldn't control my body in the pool and I was like going all over the place and uh, it was really weird 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 moment but I was still so in such like a daze through the gas and air as well, which was helping, but it was so bizarre. And I remember just looking at everyone like, something doesn't feel right. <laughs> and at this point actually as well, which I'm so glad he did this, Niall said to me, he was like, shall we call your mum and get her to come and see this part? And we'd never planned for that. My mum always wanted to, and a part of me did because she's so calm and, I am so close to her, but I thought we would want to do it just me and Niall. But, I well, I mean, I can't really remember him even asking me. I said to him after how to do it, but I was glad that she was there. Then my mum came and then the pushing phase started. The pushing phase, nothing happened for me for an hour. And I was like, I, f I remember I kept saying, something isn't right, like nothing's happening. I can't kept feeling to see if something felt different because I thought that I'd feel like bigger <laughs> it felt exactly the same I was like how is a baby about to come out of there I mean it's obviously internal but I just was sure that something had to feel different just before the head's about to come out but it didn't it just felt like I needed to go for a poop <laughs> and I remember I wanted to actually get out of the pool and, and go to the toilet but they were like no you don't actually need to go <laughs> The other thing that was really weird actually as well, before we left to go to the hospital, I had such bad diarrhea. Sorry TMI. But I didn't really know that would happen and I think it was lucky that happened because I'd emptied myself so much that I didn't poop in labour. <laughs> and I know so many people do and I was quite pleased when I looked in the pool afterwards and there wasn't poop in there. After about an hour and I remember looking at the midwives and I was thinking to myself, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no we have to be close to her arriving i was just getting a little bit worried i think that my body wasn't doing what it was supposed to do and i just didn't know what that meant the midwives did keep recommending to me maybe you should have an epidural maybe you should get out on the bed and i just really wanted to keep trying <laughs> they were kind of like oh i don't know if it's working then i remember on the next push or so i suddenly felt this pressure in between like my vagina and my bum and i was like she's coming <laughs> i remember looking at the video i was like i think it's i think it's working I, I think i think she's there and it was such a scary experience because i was like oh my gosh it's happening <laughs> the amount of times i've said that i know but there were so many points in the labor where i was like whoa i can't believe i'm in this right now <laughs> and the next push i was like right i'm gonna go for it because in my hypnobirthing they tell you to breathe through the push and it wasn't really working for me and i was like right i'm gonna i'm gonna push and honestly the only way i can describe what it felt like was a tennis ball going <laughs> and her whole head came through and it was so weird it was so weird <laughs> it's so funny as well my mum has the most graphic photos so i'm really grateful that she was there because there are so many things that keep, she captured she really reminded me of the mum and mean girls it's so funny in the clip that niall also got at the very end she's just in the background like this just taking loads of photos 
it's funny she literally has a picture of the head out of me in the pool <laughs> I can't believe she got that. The head had come through and honestly I could feel her moving and it was so weird and I was like, I just felt like I didn't, because I'd spent the whole of this time in the pool leaning over, still in that sort of on my knees leaning over sort of positioning. I was so scared of like sitting on her and so I was like, what do I do now? Because <laughs> there was about a minute between some of the pushes and so there was a bit of time, but the midwives were like, right, lean back so that when she comes out, we can lift her onto your chest. And I was like, no, no, I can't, because if I lean back, I might sit on the head. <laughs> and it was just so weird. I leaned back and then the next push came and... came out in that push honestly I can't I can't describe the feeling and I was also nervous about this point about how I'd feel and what I'd feel because you hear so many stories and it makes me feel really funny talking about it but firstly the pain just felt like it left my body and it was just this huge release of pressure but then when they lifted her onto me, I can't describe what it felt like. Cause she was, she was like squishy. And I was obviously just so in shock. And I remember I was just sobbing and so out of breath. You know, like when you are sobbing, but I think I just felt like relief. I felt like so overwhelmed, so, happy and just in complete shock i looked at niall and he was in tears and then i just burst into tears and i looked at him like oh my god it was so so just amazing and i this is na now four weeks on i wish i could do it again at the time i was like i'd love to do that moment again i wouldn't like to do the 31 hours again <laughs> ever but she was worth every single contraction I would do it again in a heartbeat to meet her again and to bring her into the world but <laughs> yeah the, at the time I was like thank god those contractions are over <laughs> but anyway so then Niall cut the cord I'm not sure how long it was I, I said I wanted delayed cord clamping so that more of the blood could go back to the baby from the placenta but then he cut the cord and then um, I cuddled her for a little bit longer and then I needed to get out of the pool to birth my placenta, which I did know about and I was glad that I did know about that because I just feel like some of these things you, you just don't hear about. <laughs> so anyway, I got out of the pool and Niall was past Winnie. So he had, that's when he had his first bit of skin to skin. I had to get out of the pool to birth the placenta because I couldn't birth it in there. And I'd been given the injection, which I'd said I wanted to help birth the placenta. Placenta wouldn't come out. And honestly, the walk from the pool to the bed was so weird. I remember I suddenly had like extreme shivers and I was freezing. I just was shaking uncontrollably. The umbilical cord hanging out. That was also one of the weirdest parts for me because I think I was just in more of a conscious state at this point too because I wasn't sucking on the gas in there anymore. The injection is supposed to help you birth the placenta so you don't have to like technically birth again although it's not the same as giving birth to a baby but it didn't work and they were kind of usually I think they just sort of slightly pull the umbilical cord and then the placenta comes out but it just wouldn't work and they were trying for like an hour and then this was one of the scary points where they did say to me look they can't kind of leave it for too long I think because it could cause you hemorrhaging or something like that but Usually I think they need to try and get it out within about two hours or maybe a bit less. I'm not sure. But anyway, they, they said to me at this point, they were like, right, it's not working. And we really want, we need to get the placenta out. So 
we're gonna get the head midwife in and see what she thinks but if we can't get this out we might have to go to theater and i was like no i just really wanted to be with winnie and niall so the midwife came in she said to me look let's try one more thing can you try and push and i was like yeah i'll do anything and then i pushed and it came out and i was so pleased and that was a huge sense of relief release in my body when that came out because it just felt like i was empty again and I was like oh it felt so nice then Winnie was passed back to me and we had a long time of skin to skin I remember looking at her I just I just was staring at her <laughs> and I was this was the bit I was quite nervous about like will I feel that instant love and some people say euphoria I guess and some people don't feel it and that's just ha what happens and they feel it later on but I was really hopeful that I would feel it in that instant moment and I can't really describe how I felt but it was I just was mesmerized by her and I just could not believe she was our baby and like our daughter and I was just like this is crazy and I just was obsessed <laughs> with staring at her face and stroking her cheeks and she was so chubby as well she's just can't wait to bring her into this video at the end to show you after a while they said you know we need to i can't remember the word they use but they need to check if you've torn and there was a lot of blood in that pool so i think it's quite common apparently to tear when you have a water birth and she came out really fast so they looked and they were like right you've got quite a lot of internal tears so it wasn't that one that can be really painful is it the perineal, the outside one, from the vagina to the bum? And that's the one that I think people worry about a lot. It wasn't that one, but they wanted to get a second opinion from a doctor on something near my bum. <laughs> they were worried that, that there, there was something that was too difficult to stitch up. Because I, I think they, they try to do it there and then with local anaesthetic, by the midwives but if it's worse or something then they might have to take you to theater and they said to me that you might have to go to theater and i was like oh god i really just want to stay with winnie and i was just so hopeful that i wouldn't have to go to theater because as well with the placenta it's essentially having a c-section of just your placenta that could have happened and i was lucky obviously that that didn't happen as well with these stitches i just really didn't want to lose those first hours with winnie and niall the doctor came in he <laughs> investigated and he i was just sat there like please 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 please, please. <laughs> obviously if it had to be then it had to be um but luckily he is like i think you're just about all right to have it done here so i was like oh thank god yeah then after that we just sat in the room actually everybody went out and mum went home so that we could have some time just with winnie together and the midwives left us they brought in some tea and toast as well which was nice and i've heard that's like the thing that happens after you give birth often in hospital all over tiktok people talk about the tea and toast it was just a moment of time where we were just together and it was just incredible i just feel so blessed to have had the experience that I had because so many people don't get that and I feel so much for women that have traumatic births or they they just have awful experiences I was so so lucky and I I just will never ever be able to thank whoever <laughs> decided or how it just went went the way it did I was so lucky and um yeah anyway so anyway I, I i really want to talk about those first few days as well after birth because they were interesting <laughs> the postpartum things that happen are wild <laughs> the stinging from the stitches when you wee was so painful I stayed then in hospital overnight to establish a good latch for breastfeeding because she wouldn't take that quickly I didn't want to drink very much and they were worried that she had jaundice and she had to have quite a few blood tests throughout the time we were still there. They're just so precious and I just was like, just anything you just get so worried about. And obviously I was a bit worried about the fact that she could have jaundice and what that might mean, blah, blah, blah. But she didn't. And we managed to establish breastfeeding 
better when we got home I think I feel like because she was in a more relaxed environment next day we were discharged at about one o'clock in the afternoon and we came home and honestly I just can't describe to you how much I love that little baby more than anything in the world I miss her so much when I'm away from her like right now <laughs> actually I'm gonna text Niall to tell him to bring her up <laughs> I can see you. Here's dad. Oh, gonna baby say, I'm gonna say hello to YouTube. Oh, oh. she got a bit of a milk, milk chops. Let's just sort that out. Oh, she's smiling. <laughs> she's a she's gassy still, smile. <laughs> still quite sleepy. Oh, I missed you. She's been sleeping a lot today. Yeah, she has actually, hasn't she? Yeah, so this is baby Winnie. Oh, look how cute she looks in a little burrito. <laughs> Oh, she's made a little sound. Saying hi. Oh. A bit bright. <laughs> so funny how many different expressions that cross newborns' faces, but it doesn't actually mean. Basil's obsessed with that. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Yeah, the dogs. Oh, look, she just did a little smile. She likes Basil. She's a little angel, isn't she? She's been really good today. Yeah, she ha she does. She's not always an angel. <laughs> But she, I mean, some so days she, she has yeah. grumpy days, she has she like has really easy days. days. She has growth spurt days, I think, and just cluster days, which she gets a bit grumpy on, don't you? Oh, look. Oh, look. <laughs> this is what Niall always says to her, it's so cute. Oh, look, a real life angel, sent from the heavens above. <laughs> I love that voice you do to her. Sent from the heavens above. I always hear Niall with her. Talking the, the intonation changes sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, it's like you've got a blocked nose. So from the head of the bone. You go, oh, she's a rug dum dum dum. A rug dum dum dum. And she goes, oh, she's rooted. Because she wants to be. It's a rug dum dum dum. No. She's so cute. She makes me so happy just to look at her. I know. <laughs> anyway, that is my birth story. How did it go? It was quite long. Was it? You've been happy for a while. while. I'm gonna have to try and I don't even know how I'm gonna condense it down because they were all little points. I think I remembered all the details. I was saying how great you were. Mm. Doting over my head. Yeah, it was like a marathon for my thumbs. <laughs> yeah. Ultra marathon for my thumbs. They must be really strong now. 30, yeah, 31 hours of back rubbing. I still don't know why all my pain was in my lower back though, unless she was back to back, but I don't think she was unless she turned last minute. You cheeky guy. Ooh. Oh, I'm gonna go down for cuddles now. But anyway, thank you for watching. We'll be back soon, I'm sure. I want to get back to vlogging soonish in the next few weeks, hopefully, and start sharing more of our life again. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining on the pregnancy journey, and we'll be back soon, won't we, Win Win? Oh, look, an angel sent from the heavens above. <laughs>